Okay, in this video we're going to talk about terrain classification um, and recognition too. Uh, I'm not going to show any photos for recognition purposes, but I'll try and use um, some other methods to help you recognize terrain that you're traveling on. Angle is the biggest factor uh, when you're talking about terrain. It used to be the other way around, but um, knowing what type of terrain you're going to be traveling on is going to be a really easy way so you can facilitate your trip. You're going to know what equipment that you're going to need for, you know, for terrain negotiation, terrain navigation. Um, it's part of pre trip preparation and planning, route selection, It's but it's going to determine what type of equipment you may need other than just simple foot travel, especially if you're in a permanent or a non-permanent snow-covered environment or glaciated environment, things like that. Um, and then keep in mind, too, um, along your hiking trip or backpacking trip or en route to a a remote canoe location or a rock climbing location, you want to think about your evacuation or extraction routes as well. So usually as guides, um, especially if we're in, working in a trail disciplinary method, you know, we're hiking or backpacking, um, we're always looking for an evacuation route a long way. This could be something every mile or two usually, you know, some type of egress point to where we can get our sub or a trip participants or subjects to definitive care if need be, you know, if there's some type of medical issue that may have arisen out there while we're, while we're um, working. You know, let's say they get bit by a snake or something like that, who knows, but we want to get them to definitive care as quickly as possible. So we need some type of um, evacuation or egress point or some type of extraction method if search and rescue has to come in to extract us. But we want to think about that terrain that we're going to be negotiating during that situation as well. Um, so if we need any equipment for that. Um, so historically, terrain classification was established um, or a grading system was put in place by the Sierra Club in the early 1900s. That's what most people know. History kind of dates back to that in some formal texts. Angles were incorporated probably in the 70s or the 80s, I'd say. That's really when those started coming into play. But those helped enable rescuers and travelers to better determine um, some people think the substrate, but not really, but it's it's what type of equipment that we're going to need to negotiate on that, or travel on that terrain, or perform rescues on that terrain. <clears throat> so, high angle usually refers to something that's more than 45 degrees. Low angle is something that's less than 45 degrees. Um, if you want to debate about that, or if there's any haters out there about that, you can leave some comments underneath, but from a professional uh, standpoint, that's exactly what that means. We use very complex systems when we're working above 45 degrees, so that's considered a high angle environment. And then below there, we use very simple systems. Um, and we're very efficient in that terrain because we know what systems to use in both. If you're not operating in an efficient manner or using really complex systems or having very time, um, time consuming rescues in a low angle environment, there's probably some other factors in place. It could be unit or agency efficiency. Um, you know, it could be elemental issues that are a factor there. It really depends on there. Um, if you're working in a riverine environment too, that's another thing that comes into play. Usually entry and egress points of rivers are um, low angle. Some of them are high angle if it's in flood conditions, you know. Um, info for another video, but let's get back to terrain classification. So what I do as a guide, um, so some factors that kind of that I look for on my trip. So the angle of the terrain that we're traveling on, so I determine which classification it is, and I'll talk about those in a second. Um, what's on the actual terrain that I'm going to be traveling on? You know, is it scree? Is it talus? Is it mud? Is it rock? Is it cryptobiotic soil? Is it dirt? What, what is it? So I want to know what's on there. Um, this really determines the equipment choice or my route planning as far as that goes. So I know I'm going to need for that trip. If I'm working in an environment that has some type of really um, easily impacted environmental concern, then I may think about traveling in another area, especially when we're talking cryptobiotic soil is such a popular term now, even though it's been around for probably before I was born, I'm 44 years old. Um, we used to use that 20 years ago when we were talking about things, um, but it seems to be so popular now, especially with Leave No Trace. Um, but it, it's definitely a big concern. But whatever the environmental impact is, we want to try to avoid that. So again, back to proof your preparation and planning. Knowing what type of terrain you're traveling on so you know what type of equipment you're going to need is a really important factor so we don't do too much damage to the environment. So we're going to talk about terrain 
types now. So class one, this is going to be zero degrees to 15 degrees. This is fairly flat terrain. There's really nothing complex to that terrain. Um, we can usually navigate it by foot. Class two terrain, this is going to be 15 degrees to 35 degrees. This type of terrain starts to steepen a little bit. You know, the angles may, may come up and we're going to say, let's say this is an angle here. So 15 degrees is going to be there. You know, maybe 35 degrees might be a little less than that. Um, so it's going to increase an angle a little bit. And the substrate may start to change, but that's really not a determining factor. It's more so the angles that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Um, class three terrain, this is going to be 35 degrees to 45 degrees. This is all still low angle terrain. So those three. Um, class three terrain, sometimes we may need to use our hands to gain, to gain upward, um, downward or traversing progress really depends. You know, this could be a talus field we may need to scramble to. If there was an injury in class three terrain, there could be potential or a fall in class three terrain, I apologize. There could be some potentials for some, some pretty significant injuries. Confidence roping is something that we usually employ or deploy in this environment in class three terrain. Um, confidence roping is something you'll learn in um, uh, hiking and backpacking guide courses, where the, no matter which country you're taking them in. That's a pretty popular thing there. Class four terrain, this is usually 45 degrees to six to 60 degrees. This is where we're starting to get into the high angle terrain. So I'll put that on the side there, high angle, excuse my chicken scratch. Um, so class four terrain, this is where you're gonna need to use your hands and to gain upward, downward, or traversing progress in that environment. Um, various different roping methods are used in class four terrain. It really depends on um, what is on the ground in that type of terrain, but we use confidence roping short pitching, short roping. Those are some pretty popular terms that we use in there. But a fall is gonna cause some serious injury and potential death in that environment. Helmets are always a good idea to use in there. Um, some roping methods or things we use, so traveling transient or running belay style anchors are sometimes used to mitigate fall potential, you know, in that environment um, or to avoid any hazards. When we get into class five terrain, this is, um, again, high angle terrain, so this is going to be 60 degrees plus. This is, um, if people are familiar with this, this is usually classified out in a micro form with the Yosemite Decimal System, which if you're familiar with that, that's 5.0, and I believe it goes up to 515C now, or D, I forget which number it goes up to. Um, but it gets pretty microed out in there for classification. This is normally called... Um, rock climbing or pitched style terrain. Um, you know, we're using features or micro features or even macro features on the rock itself to gain progress upward, downward, or traversing in any way, depending on what our trip goals are um, as far as that goes. Um, anchors are always used to protect upward traversing or downward progress in this environment. Uh, the terrain is negotiated using features, like I said, on the rock for ascending or traversing purposes, descending. Specialized equipment is used in this, this uh, classification, Class 5. So we're looking at Class 2 harnesses, helmets, ropes, anchors, belay systems, things like that. Um, they're just used to safely and efficiently navigate that terrain type. And we're also, uh, most of the equipment is, um, you know, UIAA or EN rated, CE rated, really depending on which country you're in. There are some international standards there. So class five type terrain. This is, again, high angle terrain. Rescues in this environment require a lot of skill. So we're looking for a, a mountain rescue team or uh, an MR unit. That's really important. And a credentialed MR unit, not some rogue team. There are a lot of rogue mountain rescue teams. Just because somebody has a t-shirt that says mountain rescue on it doesn't mean that they're a mountain rescue team. It takes a lot of uh, teamwork there. Class six climbing, this terminology really isn't used so much. Most people have called this aid climbing. That's a, more of a historic term, big wall climbing. That's another one. But now it's more so called clean aid, especially in the past decade or so. You'll see like C1, C2, etc. on there. Um, this is where we're using our actual equipment to gain progress up the rock, whether it's upward or ascending, descending, traversing, whatever it may be. But we're using 
different types of equipment across the rock. So we're putting anchors in more frequently than we would in class five terrain. It really depends on the route, but usually in class six terrain, it's usually every body length or something like that. Class six terrain. So we're looking for, um, I mean, I, I guess clean aid, that's more up to date terminology, but specialized equipment is used into there. And then aid climbing and big wall climbing, um, aid climbing is notorious for doing some pretty extensive damage to the rock. They used to use pitons that were fairly strong metals, chrome alloys and things like that. So they, they worked their way into more artificial anchors, the same style that are used for class 5 climbing, like SLs, spring-loaded cannon devices, um, uh, other act or active type uh, equipment like tri-cams and then passive gear like nuts, hexes, eccentrics, things that can be pulled out fairly easily out of the rock without causing any significant damage to the rock or the stone itself. So that's class six climbing. And then some ways that I like to um, kind of categorize these out, the six, I kind of put them into three compartments. Um, so the first one is going to be class one and two. This is going to be simple terrain. So this really doesn't require much Again, it can be negotiated via foot. We don't need any complex roping systems if a rescue was need to be performed. If there was an extraction needed with the search and rescue team, it can be usually done by foot with some type of carry out method. Um, two is gonna be class three and into four. Um, and I'm using numbers to classify these. Usually in guidebooks, you'll see these in Roman numerals, but I'm just using that for Aesthetic purposes makes it a little easier. So, um, category two, this is going to be challenging terrain. This is where rescues do start to use some, you know, because we're, we're kind of encroaching into the high angle terrain, but we're still in low angle, but it's kind of right on the midline there. Um, some more complex roping systems are going to be needed. And again, if we're operating this terrain as a guide or bringing participants or friends or buddies, whatever, through this terrain, we're going to be using roping methods sometimes. You know, most people aren't used to traveling through really rough terrain, so especially of going down that terrain. So again, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be using confidence roping, short pitching, short roping, depending on um, the terrain, the environment that we're working in. Um, so this is going to be challenging. And then as far as rescues go, normally we're going to be putting together roping systems, you know, especially if there's some type of span to go over, like a, a riverine environment or a canyon, um, a talus field, something like that. So the rope systems could get more complex. So we're going to call that challenging. And then three, this is going to be um, class four plus, we'll say, because this could be five and six. This is going to be complex. This is complex terrain. Everything in that terrain is complex. So this is going to be, you know, the end of class four and then into class five and six here. So we're using specialized equipment. So that's why we call that complex. Rescues in that environment are extremely complex. Um, we're going to be using various different roping methods. You're going to, you're going to need an actual credentialed MR team to come in there um, to, to perform a rescue in that environment. So that's a really simple way that um, we use to classify the terrain that we're traveling on. And then we kind of incorporate that into the environment. And uh, uh, there's other factors we use there, but this is just a basis of there. So you can use, you know, the class system here into the sixth, or we can just bring it down into three, just kind of simplify it out. This is more so what we use in, um, in government contract work or um, rescue work. And then over here is what we more so use where we really want to identify the root in a more of a, a micro fashion. So we use this more so in guiding um, or traveling through the environment. So that's terrain classification in a nutshell.